Guys, this is um, Lawrence Wayne here, and this is my entry for the Athlon $10 Robot Challenge. Now, this isn't $10, this is around $60, $70, but it's allowed under $100. And I find it a pretty cool robot. So, the wheels are made of lids, and they actually have rubber band around them for traction. It's actually a bicycle tire in this case, and this plastic bottle for kind of as a caster wheel also acts as the battery holder. Over here we have a display. I'll show you why there's a display in the robot now because it's actually quite special feature format. Um, it has two normal motors. And underneath the removable microcontroller and display, we have some wiring and an H bridge to drive the motors, and a 5 volt regulator to power everything. Then a reset button to reboot it, and a power switch to well power it. And this is a keyboard port. So I'll plug this back in. I'd show you it's running a sample program. Okay then. Now what makes this robot unique is when you bring in a keyboard. So here we are, the robot who just drove around the circle and stuff. And we can just plug this keyboard in and push the reboot button. And during this boot screen, I push a key and we edit we enter the code editing area. So here we see the code drive 10, left 10, drive 10, end. Now these tens indicate one second, because this is in tenths of a second. So five would be half a second and, you know. So you can fully edit this with the keyboard. I'm changing lines with the arrow keys, by the way. So as you saw, um, it kind of drove around. The left turn kind of turned into a right turn because it was turning so much. So let's change this from a ten two or three, for example. And now we save that. Turn it off. Put this down again. Turn it back on. Could have also just kept it on and pushed the reboot button. And that was more of a left turn. So the code is editable from onboard the robot without an external laptop or computer. And this converter thing, by the way, it's just wires connecting the little PS2 keyboard plug to some normal plugs. That's all it does. So just plug that in, press a key, and we're back in the editor. And we can do more than just make this robot drive around. So uh, I'm going to clear all the code and write a new program. Now this is kind of hard about holding a phone. So um, let's write something. I don't know. Um, print, um, I'll just print the name of the program and now we begin. So this is art. It's a start go to marker. Math one is um one really hard for holding a 
plus one. And that looks like a lot of ones, but it's variable one equals itself plus one. So it's incrementing by one. Next line. Um, let's say drive one. So now we'll drive for that amount of time. Then wait one hundred. Now currently wait waits for um I haven't changed this yet. It's also supposed to work on tenths of a second, but I accidentally made it hundredths of a second. I might either make it milliseconds or tenths of a second, or seconds, and make a separate one for milliseconds or something. But currently this is one second. And go to start. Now if I program this correctly, it should print increment. Um, that's a start marker. Add one to what at that time is nothing. Drive for that time. Wait a second. And go back to start and then repeat the process and then it becomes two drive at that time wait go back to start etc 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 so we unplug the keyboard we put the robots down <coughs> I'm not gonna give it a bit of distance for this one and I hope this works It's certainly hearable that it's driving longer each and every time. Reboot. Restarts. And so forth. That isn't the only thing it can do, just drive and do math. It has small photo cells at the front here as well. Over there and there. You can point them down for making them follow lines in front of him to make it do, you know, obstacle avoidance. And point it up for light logging, point it to the side for whatever purposes you may have. Obstacle avoidance, light following. Line following, um, light logging, finding the brightest place in the room, etc. And there's also uh, an additional port, which you can't see in this video, but it's for like the prototyping space that can be accessed via the code for user use. Now I could make this code a bit more advanced by, for example, adding, allowing it to print every time, so let's do that, for example, the increment, current increment, so we'll replace this with start, and it's actually an easier way of emptying a code line, you just push escape, so now both of these lines have start and escape, it clears it. Then tab clears all. So this will then be that n at the end means number variable one. So this should be slightly better. That's right. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to hold it for this so I don't have a big enough room. You can also hear by the motors that it's driving longer every time. So let's turn this off. 
failed. Battery fell out. So at the bottom to attach the motors it's just rubber bands and chopsticks, quite literally. So it's a very cheap robot and stuff, but it's very capable of things. And yes, this is my robot entry. Stuff like if statements, just supports if variable 3 is equal to 5, for example. Things like that. And if this condition is true, then line 2 will be run. And then line 3, 4, 5. But if this condition is false, it goes to line 2. Or three in this case. So um, yeah, I can't demonstrate all that or the photo cells because I don't have enough time. But and it partially probably doesn't work very well. If statements do. But yeah. And um, that's about it for the video. Thanks for watching.